Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so the title of this meetup is Will Microbes Save the World? And so to start to try to answer that question, and this podium is kind of in the way, so I'm going to stand over here. Um, I want to leave the world and ask, what if you all in this room were on a mission to Mars or an even further, a distant, more distant planet? Um, you'd have to figure out how to uh, recycle resources. You leave the planet with a certain amount of carbon and you don't get any more. There's no Costco along the way. Uh, so uh, the scientists at NASA actually figured out a number of different ways uh, to do this. Okay, there's a video, I guess. I have to get into the, <laughs> have to get into the shot. Okay, here, and in my hair. All right. <laughs> there's rules here. Okay, good. I can't venture outside the box. So, um, yeah, so, what was that? Oh, I, I guess I could. I probably should since I'm a little short. So, one of the things that you'd have to recycle would be your carbon dioxide, as an example. And it isn't that intuitive. It's not moving. Where is it? Okay. So, the, Na the scientists at NASA looked at uh, microbes as a potential solution. And in particular, in the case of carbon dioxide, one of the closed loop carbon cycles that they investigated involved an astronaut uh, breathing out carbon dioxide and then that carbon dioxide being captured by a class of chemoautotrophic microbes, a special class of microbes, specifically hydrogenotrophs, that would also use hydrogen, in that case generated from water, uh, and then turn that into a nutritious product that the astronauts could then eat and then that carbon would then be emitted in the form of CO2, which would then be captured by the microbes, et cetera. And so a closed loop carbon cycle would be created. So a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. John Reed and I, were, were really looking at climate change. We were looking at carbon dioxide and how our CO2 emissions just continue to rise here on Earth. And we asked the question, we, you know, well, space is kind of like a spaceship. Uh, I'm sorry, the Earth is kind of like a spaceship. We do have limited resources and limited space. And we have a lot of carbon, and we really do need to figure out how to recycle it better. Um, so we found this, this work done by NASA during the 60s and 70s, started re reading these papers about the, these hydrogenotropes. And we asked, well, can we actually take these NASA-type microbes, I'll call them, and use that as a way to recycle carbon here on Earth? And so the, the microbes that they used uh, in nature are actually really good at capturing and converting uh, hydro, uh, carbon dioxide into nutrients in those local ecosystems where they live and thrive. And those places include things like hydrothermal vents or hot springs. So they're not uh, typical places on Earth. But in those ecosystems where there's dissolved gases, they recycle the carbon really well. So we started working with these types of microbes and happily we found that we could indeed make products out of them. And so you can make, for instance, a protein-rich meal a protein that has greater, uh, a meal that has a greater protein content than say soy milk, 50% more, an amino acid profile similar to something you'd find in an animal um, protein, uh, but you can go beyond that. So that was kind of a happy discovery of ours. And as uh, was mentioned earlier, and as we know, microbes are used to cultivate a lot of products today uh, in our society, <coughs> and including the, the wine that we have over there, and cheese, yogurt, and many other products. So one can ask the question, can you then have a platform where you're able to recycle carbon dioxide into many different products? And obviously the reason why some of us would want to do that is for the benefit of the environment and the planet, but the reason why business would do that is for profit. And so can you do this profitably? And so why is it important to figure that out? I think, so the answer is yes, and I'll probably say that again, but just to make sure that I do say it now, the answer is yes. Um, and you know, why, why is it important to figure this out in general? So the, you know, by 2050, it's estimated that we'll have 10 billion people on this planet. And you have to ask, if, how are we gonna feed all these people? And how are we gonna continue to manufacture the goods that we use and consume every day? The, how are we gonna continue to manufacture the, manufacture the detergents, the, lo the soaps, the lotions, the carpet? Um, how will we continue to feed these people? And so just an example as to how our current practices cannot sustainably scale to do that, um, this is uh, an example of uh, rainforest 
in Indonesia and Malaysia and other places are cleared regularly to make room for palm plantations. And that's important because palm oil is considered to be in about 50% of consumer products. So whether it's ice cream or uh, detergents or soaps or lotions, palm oil is in a number of goods that are in my cabinet and in your cabinets as well. So we're all uh, effectively beneficiaries of, of cleared rainforests. And the problem actually gets worse because in modern agriculture, there's been over 19.4 million square miles cleared for food and for crops. And so what does that look like? Well, it's uh, the area of Africa and South America combined. So if we're gonna grow to 10 billion, how are we gonna keep up with our current practices? So if you switch over to a type of cultivation system that relies on microbes, microbes in this case that grow in the dark, you can scale vertically instead of horizontally. Um, these microbes produce products in hours instead of the typical uh, wait time of months that you have for modern agriculture. And you can have, as a result of many factors uh, combined, much more output per unit land area. As an example, you can have about 10,000 times more protein produced per land area versus soybean over the period of a year. So um, with this type of technology, you can make oils to manufacture everyday products, whether it's food or it's the consumer goods that are made with oils. There's also protein that you can make as well to feed the planet, replace things like aquaculture feed uh, that currently they're feeding uh, farmed fish, wild caught fish. So let's not do that, let's do something more sustainable. Uh, so if Earth is our spaceship that we're currently on, you know, how are we going to build systems that allow us to manufacture products and feed people in a way that's sustainable? And I think microbes can be an answer to that. <coughs>